Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Shalom. I'm David Mensa, Israeli government spokesman. It's Monday, the 17th of June, day 255 of the October 7th war, when the Hamas army of terror invaded our country and carried out their atrocities. First, an update on IDF casualties. Since the outset of this war, the IDF uh, fatalities have unfortunately risen to 662 after a very painful weekend uh, here in Israel. I have the heartbreaking task to tell you about the passing of Captain Wasim Mahmoud, who was 23 years old from the Druze community of Bet Jan in northern Israel. Captain Mahmoud fell in battle in southern Gaza. Sergeant Yair Reutemann was 19 from Karne Shomron. He was seriously wounded in battle in southern Gaza last week and succumbed to his wounds on Saturday. Captain in the reserves Eitan Koplovich was aged 28 from Hoshia and was killed in battle in northern Gaza. Senior Staff Sergeant Major in the reserves Elon Weiss was 49 from Psagot. He fell in battle in northern Gaza. Sergeant Eliau Moshe Zimbalist was 21 years old from Bet Shemesh. He fell in battle in southern Gaza. Sergeant Itai Amar was just 19 years old from Kochav Yair. He too fell in battle in southern Gaza. Sergeant, a Staff Sergeant Stanislav Kostarev was 21 years old and from Ashdod. He was killed in battle in southern Gaza. Staff Sergeant Or Blumovitz was 20 years old from Pardis Khana. He was killed in battle in southern Gaza. Staff Sergeant Oz uh, Yeshaya Gruber was 20 from Tel Menashe, and he was killed in battle in southern Gaza. Sergeant Yakir Yaakov Levi was 21 and from Chofetz Chaim. He too was killed in battle in southern Gaza. Sergeant Shalom Menachem was 21 and from Betel he fell in battle in southern Gaza. Staff Sergeant Tzur Avraham was 22 years old and from Mekabim Reut and he was killed in battle in southern Gaza just yesterday. Almost all of these young men had their funerals yesterday. All of them died fighting terror in Gaza. They were buried, almost all of them yesterday, surrounded by their loved ones. On the announcement of these fallen soldiers, the Prime Minister made a statement, and I will not read out the whole statement. It's on the Prime Minister's office website where you can find it. But I just wanted to share with you a selection of what he said. Quote, we paid a, a heart-rending price in our just war in def of defence of our homeland with deep sorrow and heavy in mourning, I bow my head together with all the citizens of Israel and weep over the fall of our heroic fighters. Our hearts are shattered before this terrible loss. The entire people of Israel embraces the dear families in their most difficult hour of grief. I stand by our brave fighters and commanders who are imbued with the sacred mission to defeat our enemies and return our hostages. When the price is so heavy, let us remember what we are fighting for. We are fighting to ensure our existence and our future. We are fighting to return all of our hostages. Citizens of Israel, do not let anyone distract you from one clear and simple fact. Despite the heavy and unsettling price, we must cling to the goals of the war. The destruction of Hamas's military and governing capabilities. The return of all of our hostages, making certain that Gaza will never again, never again constitute a threat to Israel and the return of our residents securely to their homes in both the North and the South. Together, we will fight and with God's help, together we will win." End quote. We bow our heads in tribute to their sacrifice and for their bravery in protecting our homeland. May their memories be a blessing forever.
Moving to northern Israel, we are defending against Hezbollah aggression. Since deciding to join the war that Hamas started on October 7th, Hezbollah has fired over 5,000 rockets, anti-tank missiles and explosive UAVs from Lebanon at Israeli family ho families, homes and communities. I remind you that there is no territorial dispute between Lebanon and Israel. Israel's border is precisely where the UN asked it to be. There is no territorial dispute with Lebanon. We will use all means necessary to restore security on our northern border. The state of Lebanon and the Hezbollah terror organization, which is operating under the guidance of Iran, bears full responsibility, full responsibility for the deterioration of the security situation in the north in violation of UN Security Council resolutions 1559 and 1701. Whether diplomatically or militarily, one way or another, we will ensure the safe and secure return of Israelis to their homes in northern Israel. That is not up for negotiation. October the 7th cannot happen again on any one of Israel's borders. I can confirm that President Biden's envoy, Amas Hochstein, will today have met with Prime Minister, the, our Prime Minister. Uh, IDF confirms that from the beginning of this war until now, 60,000, 60,000 dunams of land have been burned up north, 45,000 in the last two weeks alone. On the uh, war cabinet being replaced by the security cabinet, the prime minister said, quote, the war cabinet uh, in the coalition was in the coalition agreement with National Unity MK, Benny Gantz, at his, his requests. With Mr. Gantz leaving the government, there is no more need for this bra extra branch of government. The security cabinet is granted authority by the state to make decisions together with the full cabinet. Now, especially but not exclusively for U.S. correspondents, I want to draw your attention to the screening in the White House of the film Screams Before Silence, hosted by Vice President Kamala Harris today, Monday. The film is fronted by former senior Facebook executive Sheryl Sandberg. As the film shows, um, and it, which is backed up by the Association for Rape Crisis Centers in Israel, Israeli civilians suffered brutal sexual assaults that were carried out systematically and deliberately during the Hamas October 7th attacks. I urge you to watch the film. Amit Susana, who, a hostage who has suffered this abuse but rarely uh, lived to tell the tale, will address the event. Do not look away. I've seen this film. It has stayed with me like nothing else. See what Hamas did systematically and deliberately and then understand why this terror army cannot be left in control of Gaza. Now an update from COGAT and their work coordinating aid into Gaza. The usual daily reminder that the contents of over 1,000, 1,000 aid trucks currently awaits being picked up on the Gazan side of the Kerem Shalom uh, crossing. So since the beginning of this war, more than 35,000 trucks have been delivered, have delivered 670,000 tons of aid have entered Gaza, more than enough food to feed everyone in Gaza. More food and aid enters Gaza every day, 80% more food than compared to what was entering Gaza prior to October 7th. So that's the end of our briefing today. I will now take your questions, which you should put uh, in the chat together with your news outlet. Thank you. First question, please. Jack Moore, AFP News Agency. It has been reported widely today that the War Cabinet has been dissolved. Is this a move by the Prime Minister to rebuff far-right members of his coalition 
and to tighten his grip on decision making over Hamas and Hezbollah. Thank you for that question, uh, Jack. As I've made clear in this briefing, uh, the war cabinet was a prerequisite of uh, creating this national unity government. Uh, it was a prerequisite put in by uh, member of Knesset Benny Gantz. With Mr. Gantz uh, leaving the government, uh, there is no longer a need for the war cabinet and its duties will be taken over as mandated by the State of Israel by the security cabinet together with the full cabinet. Uh, I've made that clear in my briefing. You can play the tape again or I've just given you the answer. Uh, next question, please. David Clement, the News Forum. A UN spokesperson is saying that no aid has been dispatched by Krim Kerem Shalom despite the tactical pause announcement. Is that accurate? Uh, thank you very much for that question, uh, David. Uh, you should refer that question to uh, COGAT, but I can tell you, and I have just have told you, about the 670,000 tons of aid and more than 35,000 trucks uh, which are going in all the time. Uh, on average, daily, there are more than 100, sometimes 150, sometimes 200, even up to 400 trucks uh, going in. Uh, they're going in mostly through Kerem Shalom. Uh, unfortunately, the UN uh, and specifically UNRWA uh, have been shown to be less than uh, truthful in their conduct of their uh, uh, on, on, of themselves, uh, they have shown themselves to be terribly inefficient, hopelessly inefficient. So much so that, as I've said to you, that there are more than a thousand truckloads of aid sitting on the Gazan side, on the Gazan side of the Kerem Shalom crossing. So that does not ring true at all. Uh, I've told you before in these briefings that more than 80% of coordination re requests to deliver aid uh, are granted by the IDF. It is our objective to get as much aid to ordinary Gazans as we possibly can, and that is precisely uh, what we are doing. Uh, the UN have unfortunately not shown themselves uh, to have acted um, I think truthfully in this conflict, uh, in many, many ways, UNRWA in particular has been shown to have been working hand in hand with Gaza, sometimes as a front for Gaza, uh, hiding Gaza, uh, hi uh, uh, for Hamas, excuse me, as a, uh, UNRWA have been shown to be acting as a front uh, for Hamas. And so therefore, anything they say should be really verified and COGAT is the right address for any of those sorts of questions. Thank you. Next question, please. Joel Pollack, Burbat News. One, what actually are U.S. Envoy Amos Horsten proposals to avoid war with Hezbollah? What are Israel's demands? Two, could the, you comment? Let me take that first question first. Uh, thank you very much for that question, uh, Joel. Um, I think uh, any uh, questions regarding Amos Hochstein, uh, the proposals uh, should be put to um, the White House. Amos Hochstein is, of course, uh, President Biden's and the White House's um, envoy. Uh, look, we uh, want this to be resolved either diplomatically or militarily. The current state of affairs is not a sustainable reality. 5,000 rockets raining down on our north uh, making the North uninhabitable. This is not a sustainable reality. Either way, as we've made clear in this briefing, uh, our, the people of uh, Israel's North will be allowed to return home. Uh, this is Israeli sovereign territory, and this country will be defended. And either way, uh, the, these residents will be allowed uh, to return home. Safety and security will be restored to uh, the people of the North and uh, the North of this country. Uh, next question, please. Two. Could you comment on a recent report by the UNIPC Famine Review Committee that is cannot that it cannot confirm any famine in northern Gaza? Thank you for that question, uh, Joel. Um, in the last couple of weeks, we have made clear uh, using uh, international experts that the whole. Um, uh, maligning of Israel with this famine narrative has been shown to be absolutely false, incorrect, not 
true. There is no famine in Gaza. The amount of food that has gone into uh, Gaza proves that fact. Uh, it is true that Hamas do loot uh, the trucks and do sell uh, the, uh, the aid uh, onto the black market for vastly increased prices. But what we've done to subvert that is to flood the region, flood Gaza with aid, which is precisely what we've done. We have produced a, a comprehensive um, debunking of uh, the IPC uh, in the past of, and their uh, rhetoric of famine. If they are now saying that there won't be a famine, then it's good that they um, have finally uh, seen the light. Uh, but like so many, so many other areas of this war, it is too late. They have maligned this country with this idea of, of famine uh, when nothing could be further from the truth. Uh, one would have difficulty imagining in the Second World War um, Allied forces uh, bomb, uh, getting aid into Germany uh, and uh, trying to uh, support the Nazi war machine. We have here in Israel uh, got aid into uh, Gaza because our fight is, of course, not with ordinary Gazans, although they do, uh, sadly, it seems from latest polls, 70 or 80 percent of them think that what Hamas is doing or what the Hamas did on October 7th is a good idea. Nevertheless, uh, our mission is to get as much aid in there as possible and ultimately to destroy Hamas because there cannot be a new reality inside Gaza, even for ordinary Gazans, until Hamas is destroyed, because Hamas control almost everything which comes out of um, uh, Gaza, and any dissent, any dissent is met uh, very harshly and deadly, with a deadly response, which is why Gazans themselves cannot be free to express their opinion until Hamas are finally destroyed. Uh, next question, please. Judy Cohen. W I O N India. Israel has announced daily 11 hour daytime pauses in the fighting in a large area of Gaza in order to help aid distribution. Has there been any indication from Hamas that they will also abide by the pause in fighting in those areas? Uh, thank you for that question, uh, Jody. Um, I have not seen any indication that Hamas will uh, do anything to support their people. Uh, they, of course, created this uh, uh, this underground terror network of uh, tunnels uh, twice the size of the London Underground, uh, not for the defence of their people. Uh, these uh, the recent anniversary of um, D-Day. Uh, reminded us all of uh, the way London dealt with the Blitz in the Second World War. So many Londoners went down into the uh, London underground to keep themselves safe from the German Nazi uh, bombs. Uh, no one, none of Gazan's uh, civilians have been allowed that luxury. Uh, they've been kept uh, above ground. Uh, nothing has been done to secure them, nothing, uh, in, indeed the opposite. Hamas wants as many of their civilians uh, to die as possible because with the help of, uh, of uh, international media, they are pushing this line uh, of dead, uh, of, of the killing of, of, of Gazan civilians. But, you know, enlightened people, I hope, will see through this ruse. Gaza, uh, Hamas wants as many ordinary Gazans to die because they think it will um, improve their chances of staying in power. Uh, but uh, we know that uh, the only resolution for this war is the destruction of Hamas. Hamas can no longer be allowed to uh, stay in charge of Gaza, uh, precisely for the reason of the terrible things which they're doing to their own people, but also because they say quite openly that they wish to do October the 7th again and again and again and again. And we are here to stop them. Uh, thank you. Next question, please. Jim Williams, Zenger International News Service, Washington, D.C. At the G7 meeting in Italy, both President Biden and Jack Sullivan said that if asked sitcom is ready to help Israel should it be needed to fight the Iranian proxies in the north. Has the PM or IDF requested any backup in the north? Uh, thank you for that question, uh, Jim. Um, you're right, of course, that Iran are 
our enemy. They are a uh, Islamic fascist uh, uh, regime, uh, and they want the destruction of every single person uh, in Israel. Uh, they've made that quite clear. Um, but they're not only the enemy of Israel, they're also the enemy of the U.S. as well. They call the U.S. the big Satan, they call us the little Satan. So we are always working with our closest friends in the world, the U.S. Uh, government and CEDCOM, uh, to ensure that Israel has the, um, the edge when it comes to uh, defending itself against uh, Iran. You'll remember that in, in April, uh, Israel worked together with its allies in the U.S., uh, but also uh, the U.K., but also with France and other uh, countries, some of them which would um, prefer not to be mentioned, in defeating Iran. Uh, the reason that these countries came together to repel these 350 ballistic missiles, drones, uh, cruise missiles, uh, suicide drones, the reason that they came together is because they realized that Iran is not only the enemy of Israel, but it's also the enemy of many other countries as well, including the U.S. So we will always work together with our U.S. allies. Okay, that was the last question. Uh, please join us tomorrow for um, another briefing at the same time at the same place. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching. Drop a comment below. Don't forget to like, share, and hit subscribe to stay updated with our latest content. Until next time, stay informed and inspired. This is Dajabnik signing off.